hello everyone today in this video we'll be discussing the first module of computer graphics and in the first module we have the application part of computer graphics a very important question after that we have the two devices random scan and uh, raster scan display uh, graphics software and uh, there's a uh, open library which is open graphics library in that we need to uh, learn about the functions what are the point functions line functions because what we are going to do is like there will be a computer here and we'll be uh, I mean supposed to draw points here and join these and make images okay so we need to know what functions make these points and what functions make these lines how to add color to the images how to change the size and the width so those are specified in the functions part okay and the attributes part is nothing but specifying the properties of it okay after learning all of this we need to know how to uh, convert a 3d image to a 2d image like for example if there is a ball in real life it will be represented in 3d coordinates right but this same thing is represented in a 2d device like it, it is looking like 3d but it is 2d so how does that happen that's a very important question from exam point of view and and after that we have the two uh, main uh, algorithms which are the line drawing algorithm and circle drawing algorithm like DDN uh, and Bresenham's and in Bresenham's we have the circle generation as well okay so we'll be discussing each of these and it has algorithm as well as the numerical so we'll be discussing these topics in the first module and before starting if you like this video hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel so let's get started with the first topic and these are the previous questions we'll be going through that uh, through them where as we go through the uh, topics here so you can go through it to get an idea of what are the things if i just uh, give you a brief overview of what are the things asked in the previous question papers the application part is very important as i told you here the application part is very important what are the applications of computer graphics means where all you use computer graphics for example like uh, drawing graphs and all in VR in health industry and all those applications you have to mention okay that is the first important question and after that we have the two devices as I told you uh, uh, means the cathode ray tube the raster display and the random display and Bresenham's line drawing algorithm as well as circle drawing algorithm as well as the numericals associated with that for example they'll ask you to draw a circle with a radius 10 so what will have what you are supposed to do is you have to draw a circle like this using which pixels you have to eliminate okay and yeah as you can see those are the only questions which are repeated and open gl functions you have to know that's not that important but uh, that's also asked and these are the sequence of coordinate transformation that also important so yeah that's all the important topics in the module uh, one so let's get started with the first topic what is computer graphics okay uh, what do you understand by the term computer graphics this is the computer and these are there are many pixels like this okay the computer screen is divided into many boxes okay each box is known as a pixel now this pixel can have, can have any color suppose that i want to display like a line okay so what i'll do i'll eliminate this one this one and this one if i eliminate this and i'll see from far it will look like a line isn't it so that's what the coordinates are 0 1 2 0 1 2 so in the computer it will be written like eliminate 0 0 eliminate uh, sorry not 0 0 0 1 then 0 um, 1 1 uh, see what is this coordinate suppose that this is the graph here 0 0 1 2 1 2 okay what is this line this is 0 comma 1 what is this one 1 comma 1 what is this one 2 comma 1 so it will be stored in the cache like you have to uh, do these things eliminate this one this one and this one and the stall should be unilluminated so in that way we'll get to know uh, it is a line right as well as we can set this color by using rgb what is the value of r what is the value of g what is the value of b that will also be stored and applied to each pixel so that we'll be using data structures like the rs and all to store these things and uh, finally we'll be getting an image when we apply these things in the screen okay so what is computer graphics it is a term that denotes the visual representation of software data it is also you need to know you have tried the definition of computer graphics they'll ask in a, uh, if they ask an exam okay and there are wide applications of computer graphics in fields like electronics civil mechanical education and health etc that all we know like it's a very wide topic and uh, this is very important what are the applications of computer graphics okay what are the applications the first one is the graphs and charts it is used to uh, upload the graphs and chart in 2d and 3d for that also we uh, need to like use computer graphics and after that we have the computer aided design computer aided design is just using the tools of the computer to draw uh, means uh, the 2d and 3d images okay and the third one is the virtual reality vr we all know what is vr that is uh, in that also computer graphics are applied data visualizations in ml and ai and uh, education and training to give a 3d representation of what is being taught to children and computer art to make the piece uh, means art pieces entertainment like uh, like adding the effects of computer graphics in the movies and all image processing will be using the computer graphic techniques to change the uh, means adding the filters to the image basically right 
and uh, graphical user interfaces like uh, when you, you open your phone at that time you can see the um, each of these application has an image associated with that and the whole ui is designed so that is uh, where the computer graphics also used so any six you have to write if they ask an exam like how uh, to mention any six okay so these were the uh, main applications of computer graphics that was about the first topic the second topic you need to know how to how actually the uh, things get displayed see when you on the tv at that time all the pixels get displayed all the pictures come right but behind the scenes what's happening you don't don't know right so actually what's happening behind the scenes is because of two devices like uh, not two devices uh, just because of one device and that is of two types okay so what does this device do that uh, the output appears here that we'll be learning in this uh, topic okay so uh, typically the primary output of the output device in the graphic system is a video monitor so where can you see the output it's in the video monitor right the operation of the most video monitor is based on the standard cathode ray tube design okay so if i tell you basically what's happening is you know like uh, if the electrons these are the electrons okay these are the electrons they are in this level okay if they reach to this level they will emit energy in the form of light right so what's happen uh, what's happening is electrons in are in this level and some other atom comes and excites them to this level when it excites them to this level based on how high they come it's uh, uh, different colors get emitted right because uh, the energy will be here and the uh, different colors are emitted based on how high the uh, electron goes so that's what happen our uh, electron comes from uh, means another atom which is phosphorus that comes from here and excites the electrons when it excites the electron different lights are emitted based on the intensity okay so that's what's happening in the cathode ray tube so for each pixel as you can see in this uh, if this is the tv here at that time in each pixel the electron gets excited based on the intensity to show that particular color okay so that's what happens phosphorus is here that is the device from the device phosphorus are emitted to the electrons and the electrons excite to high level and the light is emitted based on which pixel you are present at okay so in that way the um, the picture gets displayed to us okay so let's see the uh, main device behind the other two devices a refresh uh, cathode ray tube based on this uh, means uh, working of this one the other two devices are made okay so this is the main thing which you need to know and uh, first you have to explain this one before writing anything uh, means uh, if they ask the video uh, display devices in the exam okay so what you have to do is as you can see here these are the connector pins so the pins are connected here for electricity purpose okay and this is the base for holding the device and here is the uh, electron gun in electron gun that only happens the electrons are emitted and the uh, uh, electrons go like this and touch the other atoms okay and these are the focusing systems and magnetic uh, deflection plates to set the direction basically these two set the direction in which part of this gun it should be displayed okay and here it is the phosphorus coated screen and this is the electron beam when for, uh, electron comes and uh, means uh, interacts with the phosphorus at that time the light is emitted okay so that's what's happening here in the device to wrap up what's happening this is the connector pins this is the base for holding the device and from the electron gun the electrons are emitted it's uh, setting the direction here and it uh, touches the phosphorus coated screen to um, means emit the light based on how fast the electron comes then that way that color is decided okay means a uh, slow means red will be shown if it is very high means green will be shown and all the colors in between will be shown based on the uh, speed in between red and green okay that's how the main working of it a beam of electrons are generated and are passed through the focusing anode to set the direction and the magnetic deflection coils also set the direction and the phosphorus then emits a small spot of uh, light at each point cons um, constructed by the electron beam wherever the beam hits at that time the uh, small light of illumination is um, seen okay that's the main uh, working uh, based on this principle there are two types of devices raster scan and random scan in exam uh, these two topics are mostly asked okay so you need to know how the raster scan uh, displays work and random scan displays work so as you can see in this picture there's a uh, uh, means this is the device which i was talking about in the previous topic so in this device the electron beam is coming and it uh, hits the screen here phosphorus screen so when it hits the screen wherever it is to be eliminated it will eliminate for example if you can see here uh, these are the points which are to be eliminated right see when the electron uh, means uh, hits the screen at this point and this point this point and all it is uh, programmed in the uh, device that at this point it should be eliminated so it will be hitting with a very high speed so these points are eliminated and the remaining points are not eliminated and it works like this like for example it will start from here it will start from the top left it will keep on scanning all of this this is known as scan line when it scans each of these wherever it is to be eliminated it will hit with a very high speed and that will be eliminated and it will go like this till the end that is known as raster scan display okay so here uh, you can even uh, like uh, output c 
because wherever see the pixels has to be eliminated at that time we will program it into the device and at that positions it will hit with, with very high speed and c will be displayed okay that is known as uh, raster scan display what about random scan display random scan display will not uh, go for all the things like uh, if these are the points which are to be eliminated it will just go to these points and it will eliminate like this and it will eliminate like this okay that's what uh, it will uh, do like for example if you see here uh, to make a triangle it will not start from here and scan each line but uh, it is to be displayed here it knows so it will directly go here it will draw a straight line here then next is like this next is like this so in random scan display it will just make uh, the device uh, means the image what it is required not all the images okay so here only the straight lines can be displayed curve cannot be uh, displayed for example if i want to display c it cannot display because for c it should go in a curve like this but if I have to display like a triangle at that time, I'll just specify this coordinate, this coordinate, and this coordinate to draw a line like this, like this, like this. Okay. For only square images and all like straight line images, it, it can be it can be used not for the circle images. Okay, that is the basic working behind the random scan display. And refresh rate is nothing but at uh, what speed it should be mean continuously giving the uh, emissions so that the illumination stays. Otherwise, if it gives once and it will just stop, it will also uh, means um, the brightness will be reduced and this will be faded away. So how much rate it should be uh, spending like uh, refresh rate at that time the illumination will be there that is uh, described by refresh rate. Okay. So that's all uh, you can go through this let's uh, just return whatever i uh, explained uh, just now and those are the two devices for displaying the uh, images on the screen okay this is the basic working principle behind the what output you see on any screen okay and uh, this were about the uh, just one color like mono color uh, if it's uh, hitting with the same speed it will be like that if it's uh, hitting with a different speed it will be in different colors right so uh, there are two techniques for the, uh, displaying different colors one is the shadow mask and another one is the uh, electron speed okay so this is the electron speed what happens is the emitted color depends on how far the electron beam penetrates into the phosphorus layer this approach is called beam penetration so first approach is the beam penetration it displays different color for example if the beam is coming from here like this there's the phosphorus screen here and here and if it hits here only it will be red if it hit like in between this it will be yellow and orange if it hits till the end it is green okay so that is how the beam penetration works to display different colors and another one is there like um, shadow masking in shadow masking what happens there is a separate gun for blue red and green and all these pass through the shadow mask and it will it will calculate the average value of uh, red blue and green it will show here when we look from uh, like uh, far what happens is what we can see is the red uh, blue and green color mixed up okay so at, at that point of the screen we see the color which is required okay for example if red is equal to zero and blue is equal to zero and green is equal to one at that time here red and blue's effect will go and only green will be remaining and we will be able to see a green color if blue is also one and uh, green is also one at that time what is the combination of these two colors that uh, color will be displayed here so that is known as shadow masking basically three guns will be there and the shadow mask will be there it will pass through it it will calculate the average color and that will be displayed here if you see from far it will look like that same color okay so those are the devices and the techniques which are used to display the uh, colors now we need to know about the second half of the module which is about the OpenGL functions okay based on this function so you will be writing the code in the practical part as well uh, to display the things like uh, line and all okay so introduction to OpenGL what is OpenGL OpenGL is open graphics library so you need to know the basic syntax of OpenGL and uh, in the basic syntax these are the few things okay like uh, the first one is the function names in the OpenGL basic library are the preferred with small gl and each component word within the function for time mean is like if you want to begin in the uh, program you'll be writing small gl then begin when you write this line of code the program will begin to clear the things you'll be writing gl clear to copy the pixel you'll write gl copy pixels and understand the format in the function names gl is small letter and after that the capital letter will be here the function name and rest all will be small letters same goes for here as well and here as well okay that is how the function names are defined coming to component names component names are nothing but the constant values like for example if we uh, uh, consider c programming at the top we write like uh, hash define uh, max 100 at that time we'll be writing this in caps right so that's the same thing co in within component name also some inbuilt constants are there like uh, gl we'll be writing underscore then writing 2d all in caps okay so in that uh, denotes the component names then we have the to uh, denote the uh, specific data type like int, uh, float, char, and all. So for that we'll be using GL capital GL and uh, followed by what data type it is. GL short. These things we'll be understanding more when we discuss our uh, program uh, program for it. Okay. For now, just listen. Even if you uh, don't get the full picture. Okay. 
and uh, after that the header files are the header files like uh, the same thing hash include windows dot hit gl dot uh, slash gl dot h gl slash glu dot h instead of these two also we can use gl dot glut dot h okay so there's a sample program here in this we'll be able to understand what are the uh, what are the things uh, what are the things i just mentioned uh, in the previous topic okay so i will be starting from hash include uh, gl slash uh, glut dot h and uh, these are the dependencies which we'll be using in this the functions are defined which we'll be using okay so let's start from the int main so always you have to start from the main function so if, if i show you how is the main function this much is the main function okay so in uh, void main function what we have int arc c and character star arc v okay these are the arguments which we'll be discussing later what do these terms mean okay for now just keep it in your mind then after that whenever we start the program you have to initialize the program okay for initializing the program we'll be writing glu in it and we'll be passing and arc c whatever we got from here and uh, arg v we, uh, which we got from here okay for that what will happen this is the screen here and the um, function which are using which is open gl that will be initialized it means it will be ready to perform the operations then we will uh, set the display mode these are things which you have to do for sure like uh, to make the things ready before uh, showing the display okay so int uh, display pos uh, display mode is it single or rgb that will be specifying here and after that the position of the window position of the window means from the top left where you are displaying like 50 and 100 means 50 from the uh, x-axis and 100 from the y-axis i guess it's like this but uh, the concept remains same like 50 or 100 i'm not sure from where but uh, the thing is like from the top left that much distance the window is designed and what is the size of this window that is defined here 400 and 300 means this is 400 and this is 300 okay so the window is also initialized and uh, write the name of the window like an example opengl program so it will be written here an example opengl program and after that we are calling init function what does init function do let's see that in init function we are setting the cl uh, colors it means first we are clearing the colors the whole display will be uh, considered as white and after that the matrix mode is set like gl projection because we need a window for that it should be uh, 2d matrix uh, where uh, where we have the x-axis and y-axis so we are calling this function after that we are setting the values 0 200 0 150 okay so that much size window will be initialized okay so and uh, sorry it's not like it that much um, uh, window will be initialized window is already initialized these points denote 0 comma 200 where it is like if it is uh, from here 0 comma 200 and 0 comma 150 is here so at that time these two points will be initialized and uh, yeah that's all the point uh, two points will be initialized okay that's all uh, what will happen after we call init function and after that uh, glut display function line segment so line segment is called here and uh, when we call the line segment what happens is the uh, means the color is cleared after that the color is set to red because rgb r is one rest to r zero so the color will be one and we are beginning this function within begin and end we have to write these two things vertex 2i 180 15 and 10 145 okay so what happens is in the uh, display function here these two uh, pixels will be marked here and since it's the line function line will be made from in between okay and what are these two things gl vertex and what is 2i i means integer and 2 means two arguments you are passing because it's 2d plane we'll be passing two arguments if it is 3d plane we'll be passing 3i if you want to pass integer values like the coordinate uh, value as 1.5 at that time we'll write 3f okay instead of 2i you'll write 3f okay this is how you specify the points here since you uh, sp uh, specified the, the argument as lines between those two points the line will be made if it was just point the points only will be displayed okay that's the main uh, means that this is the basic program how to display a line in the gl okay and finally after coming out from that uh, means the function which we called uh, line segment after that we have the gl uh, glut main loop in glut main loop the loop will happen means uh, once the thing is displayed like this line is displayed in the window this will go off but we want to display it for a longer time so it will repeatedly call this function in a loop infinite loop and until we press the exit button it will just keep on displaying okay that's what's happening here now since we see uh, have seen a program let's see what are the attributes and the properties of the uh, point functions line functions okay so in point functions we if you write like how to create three points first you write gl begin and gl end since you're uh, writing about points gl underscore points should be passed as parameter and here are the three points which are described 50 comma 100 75 comma 150 100 comma 200 these are the three points and this will be marked in the output screen like this okay if you write this uh, line of code 
and alternatively you can specify the coordinate values as like 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.3 instead of 100 200 writing it manually we can just store those things in an array in this syntax and after that we can use just the array name okay like 0 0.1 0 0.2 and 0 0.3 same thing just 0 0.1 0 0.2 and 0 0.3 instead of two coordinates we're specifying here this will also work the same thing okay this uh, just the different property which you can use and we can also define c++ for the points like uh, class can be made here and public uh, you have two function uh, two um, points here which are float values x and y and uh, point position is an object of uh, wcpi2d and that is specified as this one and this specified as this one so to uh, uh, call these two values you can use point uh, position dot x point position dot y and that function is passed between uh, begin and end in the uh, gl vertex okay that's also another way in, in, uh, in which you can specify the things again and coming to the line function to display a line first you have to write the points so that points will be initialized uh, in this way so whatever points you write here that points will be initialized after the points are initialized it will depend on what parameter you call here in that way the uh, program will run okay for example if you just write gl line okay instead of this one just cut it for now gl line you only if you write gl line p1 p2 will have a line here for example p1 p2 is there this line will be made okay consider this image uh, image is empty okay just the points are mentioned here five points are there and from where line will be made that i'm uh, telling you okay so five points are there two line will be made from p1 to p2 another line from p3 uh, p3 uh, to p4 like this it will be made and since it does not have any other pair it will left uh, it will be left as empty so if you write here gl line this is the image which will be formed suppose we write gl line strip if you write gl line strip at that time what will happen at that time it will start from like this it will go continuously until the last okay so p1 to p2 p2 to p3 p3 to p4 p4 to p5 like this it will be made but the last one will not be made okay like p5 to p1 why because after p5 it cannot find any p1 and the function called a gl strip so it will just uh, display like this p p5 to p1 will not have any line in between but if you want a line in between like from the last point to the first point as well you have to write loop like gl line loop at that time what will be displayed is this thing all the line will be displayed like this okay so those are the open line open gl line functions coordinate representation is very important topic from exam point of view so here what we have is to generate a picture using programming language and converting from the 3d image to 2d image so let's see what are the sequence of steps followed uh, in this um, transformation okay so to generate a picture using programming language first we need to give the geometric uh, descriptions like uh, where it is located for example if i have to display an apple in the um, in screen at that time i have to uh, show where the uh, x coordinate y coordinate and z coordinate are present right that are the coordinate representations that we have to uh, first specify in the programming language then for a picture given the special uh, frames a reference frame is um, in specified if it's spherical hyperbolic or which reference frame you are talking about and that must be converted to cartesian coordinates and several cartesian reference frames are used in the process of conversion and display at that time the shape of the individual objects and all are uh, means uh, transformed so the, we, are, uh, we uh, place the objects into the appropriate locations and uh, then we will be converting them to the uh, next uh, transformation step okay so if i show you an example and after the example you can uh, go through the theory part to get the more information okay so what happens is if you want to display uh, means a cylinder and a cube in the screen like uh, if you want to display it like this at that time you will start from here what are the coordinates of the uh, individual object like uh, the height width and the depth of um, the cylinder as well as the cube that is specified first and that will be combined and written it like this that is known as world coordinate this is the second step after the world coordinate it goes through the viewing and projection coordinates like how to uh, means view it from different angles that will be specified here and after that the normalized coordinates are specified like where where it is like how much distance it is that is uh, normalized to one one and one so in between one and one and one unit it will be specified how it looks like and finally we'll be converting that into the uh, device coordinates means uh, means converting the 3d um, means the coordinates this is the 3d coordinate this also 3d this also 3d that should be converted to 2d right like this is x axis this is y axis wherever the color is to be displayed like this in this x axis and y axis value that is displayed in 2d screen so that conversion is known as the transformation of coordinates okay so we'll be starting from here what is mc mc is modeling coordinate which is the first one x y z so this is the modeling coordinate where is the x-axis, y-axis is that axis that is converted to world coordinate which is WC. So in the same way we will be converting to the world coordinate, then viewing coordinates, then projection coordinates, then um, 
normalized coordinates it will be in 3d and that will be finally converted 2d because our uh, tv which whatever screen we look it is 2d screen isn't it so we need to just specify in the x-axis and y-axis how it should look like the values of it so that is known as the transformation here okay a very important uh, question from exam point of view okay and after that we have the dda algorithm this is about the plotting the lines so we are left with uh, two topics which are the line algorithm and the circle algorithms in line algorithm we have the dda as well as the bresenheims and in circle also we have two which is the uh, uh, midpoint circle algorithm as well as the bresenheims algorithm so let's uh, discuss each one by one so what is about uh, the dda algorithm is we'll be starting from here uh, there are two points x1 and uh, y1 x1 y1 and x2 y2 x1 y1 are 2 comma 2 and x2 y2 are 9 comma 2 okay so these are the two points here if you see here in the screen this is 2 comma 2 and this is 9 comma 2 you have to uh, draw a line in between these so if you draw a line in between this uh, um, which are the pixels which are to be eliminated obviously you know that it's uh, having slope as uh, means the slope is zero it's not changing so you'll be obviously taking the next coordinate here 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 and the y value will remain constant Y value, uh, y value will always be 2 here and this the x value will be changing and what values we get here that are the things which are to be eliminated so how do we understand that what is delta x delta x means how much uh, x, uh, change in x is, it is happening 9 minus 2 means how many steps we have to take 7 steps you have to take to reach from here to here and how much change is happening in y it is uh, 2 comma 2 9 comma 2 so y value is 2 itself so it is 0 what is the slope delta y by delta x which is 0 by 7 that is also 0 steps will be taken as 7 why are steps taken as 7 we have to consider the greater value in uh, delta x as well as delta y which is a greater value that we have to take that means number of steps will be there right so that is the steps here and what is the increment in x increment in x means each time how much x is getting incremented x increment is nothing but how much change in x is there and how many steps are there in total means x should reach from here till here and how many steps are there that is for total so if we divide like uh, how much increment in x happened as well as how many steps are there then you will get how much increment should happen for one step so that's what we are doing delta x by total number of steps so for each step we will get how much increment should x should happen it is one right because it's just like a straight line here and y is not changing so x will be incrementing one 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 seven times y increment is 0 because delta y is 0 there is no change in y and the number of steps are 7 so each of the 7 steps y should be incremented as 0 ok so if we plot these things here starting from 2 to x is incremented y is same x is incremented y is same like that should happen 7 times so this for the slope which is uh, less than 1 and uh, what about the slope which is greater than 1 so for slope greater than 1 at that time we will be having like this the two points x1 y1 x2 y2 here the slope is a straight y line so here also the same thing will happen first you'll find delta x delta x is nothing but uh, what is the final value of x here this is the uh, initial value and final value are same as 2 so uh, delta x is 0 delta y will be uh, 7 why because it's starting from 5 and ending at 12 so uh, what is the slope delta y by delta x 7 by 0 it's infinity so slope is infinite here but the number of steps are 7 we have to take greater value in delta x and delta y so what is the increment in x which is happening delta x by number of steps which is 0 by 7 it's 0 y increment how many uh, times uh, means what is the change in y delta y is 7 how many steps are there 7 so it is 1 so each step what we have to increment is 0 should be incremented for x as well as 1 should be incremented for y each time so it will form a straight line here ok so these are the values x is not changing here y is changing one at a time this is x increment this is y increment so these were the things which were the basics and let's see the uh, another value like uh, slope in between uh, 0 and infinity okay so for that what we have to do for in between 0 and infinity like this is uh, infinity here slope and this is 0 here and it can be less than 1 this is equal to 1 and this is greater than 1 the slope right so let's see how to do it for each of these cases so firstly we'll be considering which is less than 1 okay if it is less than 1 means what less than 1 slope means that x value is increasing faster than y value right because delta y is small delta y uh, delta x is greater so x should increment faster than y so delta x will be greater than delta y so these are the two points 5 comma 4 and 12 comma 7 first point and the last point so here as you can see x is incrementing faster th uh, than y so what is the increment in x x uh, is incremented 12 minus 5 which is 7 y is incremented 7 minus 4 which is 3 so 7 is greater than 3 how many steps you have to take the greater among these two so total number of steps which you will take is 7 okay and the slope is delta y by delta x 3 by 7 and delta uh, means uh, yeah this is the slope this is 3 by 7 means less than uh, 1 right 
so the total number of steps are seven so we have to travel seven steps from here till here to reach this point okay so each time how much x will be incremented how much y will be incremented total number of steps are seven x increment is delta x by number of steps delta y by number of steps here seven by seven is one each time x should increment one and uh, similarly y should increment some decimal values till the up here so each time y will be incremented delta y this is a total change in y and total number of steps so for each step it will be the division operation in between these two things that will be 0 0.4 so y should increment 0 0.4 each time so what you can observe from here at each uh, iteration i should increment x as uh, 1 and y as 0 0.4 so if we plot the points here the starting point is 5 comma 4 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 x will be incrementing plus 1 each time till it reaches 12 y will be incrementing 0.4 only 0.4 plus 0.4 plus 0.4 plus 0.4 so if we want to plot these pixels here we cannot just plot these things which i have to convert into decimal uh, instead of decimal values we have to convert to integer values so for that what we will be doing is 4 is writ written as 4 itself 4.4 estimated to 4 4.8 as 5 5.2 as 5 and so on so we get these points here so we'll be uh, plotting these points here 5.4 6 comma 4 7 comma 5 8 comma 5 and so on so those points are displayed in the screen here 5 comma 4 6 comma 4 7 comma uh, 7 comma 5 8 comma 5 and so on okay in that way till here 12 comma 7 it will reach okay so that's what's happening if the slope is less than 1 the x will be incrementing faster than y and these are the steps we need to follow and plot the pixels in the graph Moving on to the uh, slope greater than 1, just the difference is that y is greater change than x. So y will be incrementing 1, 1, 1 and each time and x will be incrementing some decimal values here. So delta x is 5, delta y is 8, the slope is 8 by 5 which is greater than 1. So y will be incrementing faster. Each increment in x is 5 by 8 which is 0 0.6 and 8 by 8, 1 because y will be incrementing each time 1 and x will be incrementing some decimal value. Okay, so the result is written as follows same here as the previous one. Just the decimal values are uh, means the floating points are converted to integer points by estimation. Okay, that is for greater than 1. And one thing you can observe here, whenever we increment x here, x increment is written as uh, how much is incremented? 1. What is 1? 1 is nothing but just the next point. If the slope is less than 0, uh, sorry, if the slope is less than 1, at that time x will be incremented 1, 1 each time and y will be incremented some decimal values. So, if it is xk here, at, if I am presented xk point like for example 5 or 6, at that time what is the next uh, value is xk plus 1, right, xk plus 1. So, xk plus 1 is the next value which is to be gone and that is nothing but the previous value plus 1. The same thing goes for y as well but instead of um, xk uh, yk plus 1 we are not incrementing y 1 1 each time how much we are incrementing y increment is written as this one 0 0.4 if you observe carefully 0 0.4 is the same value as this one 3 by 7 which is the slope so slope value is added to the previous value so the next value of y is slope value plus the previous value slope value plus the previous value slope value plus the previous value so yk uh, yk plus one is the next value of y that can be written as previous value of y plus m m is the slope okay same thing you, uh, you can observe here also how much x is getting invented 0 0.6 after each iteration which is 5 by 8 5 by 8 is the reverse of 8 by 5 so you can write it as xk plus 1 by m because this is the increment which is followed in the previous um, means the previous value is added okay yk plus 1 if the slope is greater than 1 y is incremented 1 each time and x is incremented decimal values so yk will be yk plus 1 is the next value of y that will be 1 plus uh, yk which is the previous value okay so these are the two things uh, formulas we need to know to uh, calculate the next values of x and y in each iteration okay for slope less than one and for slope greater than one these are the important formulas from the uh, dd algorithm okay if the slope is equal to one it's very simple if these are the two points 12 comma 9 and 17 comma 14 12 comma 9 17 comma 14 each x and y will be incremented one so the slope will be one and what will be the x increment it's one and one so xk plus one and yk plus one will be previous value plus one if we uh, write like this this is the starting point add one and one in both sides and until reach the final point okay just keeping these concepts in mind, if you write uh, firstly the algorithm of DDA, we have two points x1, y1, x2, y2. What is dx? dx means change in x. How much the total change is? That is nothing but delta x which we are writing. x2 minus x1 means the final point minus the initial point. Okay. What I mean is this one. Delta x. How much the x is changed in total and how much the y is changed in total? Delta x and delta y. That is x2 minus x1 and y2 minus y1. Okay. So dx and dy is taken. Then we will take the value of greater among these two. Is dx greater or dy is greater? 
that will be the number of steps right if uh, x is greater it will be the value of x here if it is y is greater the value of y is taken abs means absolute value in case negative values are there okay so what is the x increment it is nothing but uh, dx by the number of steps y increment is dy by the, uh, dy by number of steps right that's what we are uh, writing here x increment and y increment which is nothing but delta x by number of steps delta y by number of steps after you have got the x increment and y increment what we are doing we are adding x and y increment to the previous x and y values right so that's what we'll be doing in the algorithm as well after we got the x increment and y increment values for a number of steps like from 0 to 7 at that time how many number of steps are there till all these steps plot x and y1 plot the point in the graph then increment the x and y values based on the x increment and y increment plot the next value again do the same thing for how many number of steps are defined here okay that will plot to the line okay this is the algorithm for DDA. Similar to the previous one, we have the uh, algorithm which is the Bresenham's algorithm. So here what's the difference that is happening is in uh, Bresenham we will not be including the float values. Okay. So if float values come at that time, what we have to do instead of estimating as previous uh, in the previous case. See here we had got the uh, float values, right? We had estimated it to 6 and all. But uh, in the Bresenham's algorithm, we will be avoiding the float values. So how exactly we will be avoiding the float values that we will be seeing in this topic, okay. So um, start, uh, start from here, like uh, take two points first, uh, x1, uh, y1 and x2, y2. So x1, y1 is what? 2, comma 2 and x2, y2 is 7, comma 7. So if we see in the graph, which are those two points, those two points are these two, right? 2, comma uh, 1 and um, so I guess okay 3 comma 8 fine fine so the, uh, let's uh, take these two points 7 comma 7 this one okay 7 comma 3 and uh, 3 comma 1 okay let's take these two points now if we uh, see these two points at that time uh, if we draw a line straight from these uh, two points means from here till here okay let's take it from here till here so if we draw a line we'll draw like this okay let me change the color if you draw a line like this it will come in this way right okay so as you can observe carefully in this line what ha what's happening is um, at this point this pixel will be covered right because red line is passing through it right so at this pixel this point will be covered but uh, and, and this pixel also this point will be covered and this will be covered here and this will be covered here so all the pixels will be covered in this fashion but the remaining pixel which is present here that cannot be covered in this way or this way that cannot be decided easily why because as you can see the line is passing from here right the pixel is starting from here the line is starting from here and it's passing from here okay and uh, as you can see here it's passing through through uh, through two pixels one is from here okay here also it is there and here also it is there means this line has passed halfly in the halfway through this pixel and halfway through this pixel so which pixel you will be choosing this one or this one right that is the main question so an easier approach can be which is the distance less here if it's less here that means it's passed more through here if it's less here it's passed more through here then we'll be choosing the pixel in that way that's what uh, the main idea behind the Bresenham's algorithm we'll be seeing uh, how exactly we'll be choosing we'll be measuring some distances Based on the distances, we will be choosing either we have to color this pixel or we have to color this pixel. Okay, because uh, directly seeing without any um, uh, means uh, calculating the uh, distances, we cannot say because it's equally passing through here also and here also, right? So uh, how can we say that it's passing through here but not here and but here but not here like that we cannot say. So we need to measure it, okay? So that's what's happening in the Bresnan's algorithm. Here's a more clear picture. Uh, a line is passing through here and it's passed through here also and here also so which pixel should be chosen is the main question okay so another representation in the textbook it's given in this form if a line has passed through like this and this is the x uh, value at this point which should be chosen this point should be chosen to be colored or this point should be chosen to be colored that's very easy whichever point it's nearer to that we will be choosing right same thing we'll be doing two measurements we will make d upper and d lower and then we'll compare if d upper is greater than d lower or not okay in that way we'll be uh, doing the measurements okay then in that we'll be choosing which uh, pixel to cover like the upper one or lower one we have to color 
so here's the derivation at each point x uh, x value will be incrementing to the, uh, to the next point y value will be either yk or yk plus 1 what does this mean is suppose that i was uh, present here these are the y values right like 1 2 3 and all okay 1 2 3 at each time x value is incremented this value is covered uh, colored and x value will increment to 2 now at 2 either y can be this one or this one means either y can be this one only or it can change to the next level so it is yk or yk plus 1 but xk plus 1 will always increase 1 by 1 for slopes less than 1 right because x is increasing faster every time x will increment by 1 but y is it's doubt like it will either either increment or it either it will not increment okay so we'll be starting from the main equation of the line which is y is equal to mx plus c so instead of x in the next trail it will be xk plus 1 and plus c here this is the y next one okay uh, next y what answer will be there that is this answer okay so what is d1 d1 is nothing but y minus yk what is y minus yk y minus yk is this one this is the value of y intersecting at this uh, this point we have to decide whether to go here or here so d1 is nothing but y minus yk okay so d lower is equal to d1 this distance and this distance is y um 2 okay uh, sorry d2 d2 is the upper distance yk plus 1 minus y so simplifying this what we get is and uh, substituting the value of xk plus 1 because we are calculating for the next equation so we'll get these two equations for d1 and d2 now if d1 minus d2 is less than 0 at that time we'll take yk what does this mean why uh, d2 minus uh, d2 uh, d1 minus d2 is less than 0 d1 minus d2 is less than 0 means this is d1 this is d2 this minus this is less than 0 that means this this is smaller than this if this is smaller than this we'll obviously choose the lower point right because if this distance is smaller we'll choose the lower point in the other case if d1 is greater than d2 at that time this distance is more and this distance is less we'll choose the upper point that's what i have written here d1 minus d2 is less than 0 then choose yk if d1 minus d2 is greater than 0 then choose yk plus 1 then we will write the equation we have d1 value we have d2 value we will write this equation here and then we will be simplifying it okay just the simplification thing while simplifying we will get another term m here so what is m m is nothing but um, by this equation we can get the value of m here so m is nothing but delta y by delta x right m is equal to delta y by delta x so uh, substituting the value of m as delta y by delta x and um, cross multiplying it that means delta x term in the numerator at that time what we get is this value yeah, after multiplying the delta y value inside okay so um, and further simplification gives us these things like it's independent of x and uh, y of xk and y of k what we are concerned with is the distances from xk and y of k right we are comparing uh, comparing two things so we need not have extra terms what i mean is suppose that um, you have to compare how many oranges are there and how many apples are there okay like for example if there are five apples and oranges are three okay at that time um, like just the comparison between five and three is being done but uh, what if i have like uh, six pens along with it and uh, here also three pens along with it pen doesn't matter okay how many pens you have that doesn't matter so i can remove the pen term right because i'm just comparing this one and this one so i can I ignore these terms pen terms and just compare these two terms so that's what we are doing what we are concerned with we are just concerned with yk and xk so we need not have minus 2 del y and uh, uh, 2 del x c minus del x okay we need not have these terms because these two terms will be present in both the sides of the equation so anyways it doesn't matter what matters is xk and yk so we are just concerned with these two values so therefore delta x into d1 minus d2 is equal to 2 delta y x k minus 2 delta x y k okay so that is known as positional parameter okay so delta x into d1 minus d2 this is the value and this value will be taken for the further uh, means the decisional parameter so pk is equal to this one pk plus 1 is nothing but just add uh, k as x next because xk it is for k for k plus 1 means it's also called as next so either you can write x next or xk plus 1 so this is the important formula we'll be uh, using this formula in the further derivation okay so to quickly wrap up what uh, what all we have done till now started from the derivation here this was the first point this was the next point of k and uh, we have uh, done d1 and d2 the distance from the next axis uh, means the previous pixel to the uh, current location and the next pixel to the current location subtract these two if it's less than zero means we have to choose the lower one 
if it's greater than zero means you have to choose the higher one m we got here so we'll substitute the value of m because m will give us uh, fractional value so m should not be there if you multiply it by del x it will be in this form and the uh, dependent terms are just this one and this one so we have just taken that and written pk as that okay if pk plus one means just substitute the value of k as k, uh, k plus one or next okay after we have got these two values we'll subtract these two values to get what changes is happening okay like uh, for example if there is a car here that car is moving at 2 meter per second then it's moving at 4 meter per second then it's moving at 6 meter per second okay these values 2 meter per second 4 meter this is pk this is pk plus 1 and this is pk plus 2 but we want to know how fastly it is increasing its speed i mean like it's uh, increasing with 2 meter per second 2 meter per second more 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 like that what is the acceleration i'm talking about so we are just calculating like that how fast it is increasing p next minus pk the previous uh, positional parameter minus the current positional parameter so what answer we get is that uh, if it's moving faster or slower okay that answer we'll get so if it is less than zero means these two values is less than zero means it's uh, moving in negative direction if it's moving in negative direction we have to use this formula negative direction means what it should be just having yk instead of yk plus one it will having next uh, y will be yk only okay y next is nothing but yk only okay if it's less than zero it is yk okay not the upper uh, position will take the lower position will take why because it's less than zero if it's greater than zero just substitute the value of yk as yk plus uh, one at that time we'll get these values will get cancelled here and what answer we get is this one so we have to use these formulas in the further derivation suppose that there is a point x1 y1 and y is equal to uh, y1 is equal to mx by mx1 plus c at that time we'll be using this formula what is pk's formula pk is nothing but this one okay 2 del x uh, 2 del y x1 minus 2 del x y1 plus 2 del y 2 del x c this formula okay this is the formula which we are talking about okay by using this formula we will find out what is the first positional parameter which means p0 then we will be finding out p1 then we will finding out p2 and so on so first we need the value of p0 so to get the value of p0 we will be using this formula okay these two formulas are for less than 0 and for greater than 0 okay how we got this one this formula we got from here you just substitute the value of y next as yk in case less than 0 yk plus 1 in case greater than 0 so we got these two formulas now to find out the value of p0 we'll be using this equation we just have written this equation and after that um, the value of c is taken as uh, by y1 minus mx1 okay c is equal to y1 minus mx1 that is substituted here and we'll simplify this one and we'll get the value of p1 okay p0 or p1 the first value i mean this is the first value so the important formulas which you need to remember are these three this is the first value p1 first you'll be calculating this one then you'll be calculating if it's less than if you got the answer greater than zero use this in the next formula then like put p1 here and find out the next formula if you got uh, less than zero then use this one this for more than zero this for less than zero p next and in the next iteration you'll use what value you got in the p next here based on less than zero or greater than zero you'll use either this one or this one so like that only you'll have to keep on doing uh, until you uh, means how many steps are needed to be done okay so we'll be understanding this more well while we'll be solving a problem before that we need to know the algorithm if they ask an exam we have to write this algorithm we have considering uh, considering two points x1 y1 and x2 y2 and x is equal to x1 y is equal to y1 first we are calculating the dx value and dy value how much x is changing how much y is changing and after that the p value first p value is 2 dx minus dy as given here 2 del x minus uh, 2 del y minus del x so don't worry about the terms like if it's 2 dx minus dy or 2 dy minus dx it depends on the slope okay so we'll be discussing that more in the numerical okay and while x is less than x2 means x has reached the end till x reaches the end we have to increment it always x will increment but the question is whether y will be going to the next pixel or the previous pixel only so that depends on the p value if p is less than 0 that means calculate the next p value p plus 2 delta y and um, it will not increment y if it's the other value like p is equal to p plus 2 del y minus del x that means p is greater than 0 at that time you have to increment y so i will be incremented here okay in that way it will keep on going until the uh, x1 reaches x2 okay so this is the algorithm for Bresenum's line drawing algorithm let's see an example here to make the things more clear firstly it consider the point 1 1 and 8 5 if you see in the graph where is 1 1 1 1 is here and 8 5 is here okay this one is the 8 5 
So you have to draw a line in between this. In between, you have to select whether we are selecting this pixel or the down pixel or the up pixel. Okay. X will be incrementing each time one because the slope is less than one. What is the slope here? Uh, X terms minus and Y terms minus. Like it will be minus four here and it will be um, minus seven here. So it is obviously less than zero. Means uh, it is uh, this value is less than zero. So we'll have a slope less than one. In uh, case of slope less than one, at that time X will be incrementing one each time. And the selection has to be made only if y will be increasing or not. Okay, so we'll be writing the important things here. Like these are the three important formulas: this one, and the other two p formulas, which I have uh, not mentioned here. But uh, those two formulas are this one only. Okay, these two. Whether it's less than zero or greater than zero, it will depend on that. We'll be using these formulas. Okay, p plus two delta y and uh, two delta y minus two delta x. So let's see what's happening here. Firstly, you have to do, uh, do that. Uh, these things you have to write here. So this is the p if it's uh, less than zero this formula and p greater than zero this formula i've written here okay so uh, what is dy dy is nothing but change in y which is uh, 5 minus 1 which is 4 so what is dx 8 minus 1 7 after you've written dy and dx find out these things 2 del y minus del x 1 p plus uh, 2 del y and the p plus 2 del y minus 2 del x that we'll be doing later but we'll be finding out what's the value of 2 del y as well as 2 del y minus 2 del x 2 del y is 8 and 2 del y minus uh, 2 del x is minus 6 okay so uh, there's one trick here if uh, first answer what you get p 2 del y minus uh, del x this answer you'll get as um, 1 so 1 is greater than 0 okay just keep in mind the first uh, value is 1 now when you have got 1 you'll check if 1 is less than 0 or greater than 0 it is greater uh, greater than 0 then what you will do you'll use this formula in this formula first you'll write here 1 instead of p plus what is this one this value we have calculated here as minus 6 just add minus 6 if it's greater than 0 if it's less than 0 suppose that 1 was less than 0 1 will be writing here and adding this value this value is already uh, written here as 8 so if it's less than 0 add this one to that value if it's greater than 0 add this one to that value that's all what we have to do okay let's see uh, what's happening first first we will be writing here x and y values as 1 1 and what is the p value you got 1 right then after that if you got the value as 1 at that time it's greater than 0 if it's greater than 0 what we have to do increment both x and y so x will be 2 and y will be 2 here after you have got those two values it's greater than 0 so add this one to previous value which is 1 1 plus minus 6 is minus 5 so then write here uh, the value minus 5 then check if minus 5 is greater than 0 or less than 0 if it's greater than uh, if it's less than 0 at that time what you are supposed to do you have to just increment the x value y will remain same right 2 will, two will become 3 and y will remain same as 2 only and uh, what you are supposed to do is you have to add the this value if it's less than 0 add this one minus 5 plus 8 is 3 so write 3 here after i have written 3 here it is greater than 0 add minus 6 to it so when you add minus 6 you'll get minus 3 it since it was less than 0 increment both this one and this one and you'll have these terms minus 3 is less than 0 add 8 to it it will be 5 and minus 3 is less than 0 so increment uh, only x value y will remain same and it's greater than 0 here add minus 6 it will become minus 1 and since it was greater than 0 add both values uh, like 5 will become 6 and 3 will become 4 and same thing goes on till the end where you get 8 comma 5 okay so 8 comma 5 is the point which till which we had to reach and what values you get here for pixels that you have to plot in the graph that's all what you have to do in the Bresenham's uh, LDA example okay so this is very important from exam point of view like uh, they will ask either the line question or the circle question okay so you need to be thorough with both of these so this one uh, was about the line dd or bresenham's uh, make thorough with both of those now we'll be moving on to the uh, circle drawing algorithm in bresenham's circle drawing algorithm uh, firstly let's see how a circle looks like in the graph so this is a circle here okay this is a circle of radius r and uh, here are the y coordinate and the x coordinates and uh, this circle is divided into four parts mainly the four parts are quarter one quarter two quarter three and quarter four and the quarters are also further divided into octets okay so there are how many octets in total eight octets this is the first octet second third and so on okay and let, if you see the y x and y values uh, if i take at this point x comma y this point will be y comma x like the symmetric point right if it is uh, like for example if you have taken here uh, what is this point if the radius is r this point is zero comma r right what will be this point r comma zero like that only if i just come here like one degree here one degree here this will be like uh, one comma r minus one and this will be um r minus one comma one so it is same as y value coming here and x value coming here 
right so in the same way here also it will be like this x comma y and y comma x make its mirror image if it is x comma y here it will be x comma minus y because y value is negative here y value is positive x will remain same right at this point x is the x is having the same value here also the same thing y comma uh, uh, minus x and forming a mirror image of this one just the x value will become negative here so y will remain negative x will become negative here and y will become negative x is uh, already negative y is negative x is uh, means x, x has become negative here this is the x axis values and uh, here the y value is positive only x has become negative so that's all what's happening here um, like in this way we will be able to uh, plot all the uh, means the whole circle if you are able to plot this uh, part of the circle the first quarter of the circle means uh, first octet if you are able to plot just by changing the x and y values we will be able to plot this one just by changing the symmetric of this one we will be able to plot this one if half circle is done we can do this circle also so in this uh, module what you are supposed to do is in exam they will ask to plot the first octet itself okay that's all so let's see how to do that before that it's a symmetric figure so eight uh, octants are there and circle equation is x square plus y square is equal to r square from the center this you already know the circle equation the uh, usual one and in the first quadrant if we consider a circle here see this is the circle okay it's passing through like this this is the whole circle okay like this it's uh, the circle is there i am just considering this part of the circle okay so here this is the center okay from here the center is there and these are the points which are taken in consideration this is the first point which is in the circle itself second near to circle and third outside the circle okay now if you observe carefully if you have to plot the pixels at that time um, which pixels will be plotting in the first quadrant x value will be incrementing like uh, we are starting from here the next uh, value of x will become this one next value will become this one but it's not uh, the same uh, the same for y if y i have uh, plotted here like this then in the next one also i am not sure which one i have to plot right either i can plot uh, this one y value or I can plot this y value even if not the whole box just see that uh, I, I which i am plotting i am plotting this one point or this point okay just we are considering the points so if you have to choose between two points you'll be seeing is this distance less than here or this distance is less means this is the middle point these two distance will be same here what i'm talking about is is this distance same where the point is crossing or this distance is uh, lesser which distance is lesser that one will be choosing means if this distance is lesser at that time i'll be choosing this point if this distance is lesser means had the line gone through like this there is no way i'm going to choose this one i'm going to choose this point only right because it's more closer so wherever it is more closer that one will be choosing observe carefully if this is xk and yk this point will be xk plus one and yk itself and because in same axis if it's this point it will be yk minus one xk plus 1 will be there in any case but just the question is whether it will be yk or yk minus 1 in the previous one we are checking if uh, it was yk plus 1 but here it will be yk minus 1 why because uh, in the circle as you can see from here the y value is uh, decrementing till it reaches 0 so y value will be decrementing in each iteration x value will be incrementing here and will be uh, just the question is whether y will uh, decrement or remain same okay Coming to the derivation part, there are two possible points. Either uh, means uh, x k plus one in, is in both the cases, and the y will be either y k only or it will become y k minus one based on the distance which it is closer to. Okay, so the midpoint will be like midpoint between these two will be this value plus this value by two, this value plus this value by two. It will be x k plus one and y k minus one by two. So this is the midpoint which we got. This as the previous one, we will find the positional parameter for the uh, current case k plus one, and then we will subtract it. Based on what value you get, less than 0, greater than 0, we will be making a decision. So, just to substitute the value pk is equal to xm square plus ym square minus r square. This is the circle equation. And x, uh, m value is substitute. Like um, in the next case, it will be either uh, k plus 1. So, x value will be k plus 1 only. But y value will either become k. Um, no, no, no. Y value will be this one only. Okay, because we are calculating mid value, it's constant here xk plus 1 and y, yk minus 1 by 2 so this is the midpoint values okay so just substitute those values and subtract these two equations as uh, sorry these two equations when you subtract what you get is this answer okay this is the simplification thing you can easily find out what's happening you'll get this answer now if pk is less than 0 what does that mean uh, yk plus 1 is equal to yk pk is less than 0 means what it is nearer to yk okay so yk plus 1 will also be uh, yk itself so the equation will be just that 
you will substitute yk uh, plus 1 as yk here in this equation when you substitute that this will get cancelled and this will also get cancelled when it's taken as yk yk here also yk this will get cancelled and this will be the equation okay this is the important equation and if it's greater than 0 that means yk plus 1 is next uh, nothing but it's near to the next point which is yk minus 1 substitute this value in the place of yk plus 1 in this equation what you get is this answer simplify you'll get this answer here so two important formulas this one and this one you need to find out p naught starting value the starting value where we are starting from we are starting from here in the first quadrant see if there is a circle here starting from here till here first octet right so what is this value this value is nothing but 0 comma r substitute the value of x as uh, xk plus 1 and y as yk minus 1 by 2 then write it as 0 plus 1 and yk as r okay so if you write here 0 instead of xk and um, y r instead of yk we will get this equation simplify will get the value of p naught okay so the important formulas are these three start from here find out the next value here if it's less than zero use this equation if it's greater than zero okay that's all what we'll be doing let's see an example the question could be as follows plot the first octant of a circle centered at origin having the radius 10 units so uh, firstly we have to find out uh, the radius okay what is the radius 10 units okay it's given then we will be calculating p naught what is p naught 5 by 4 minus r 5 by 4 is 1.25 if you approximate we can write it as 1 so i'm in this equation i'm taking it as 1 okay so if in exam they don't allow you have to take 1.25 only but for simplification purpose and understanding i'm taking it as 1 so p naught is 1 1 minus r so substitute the value of r you'll get the value of p naught which is minus 9 now you have got the first value of p naught what you have to do see this equation if it's less than 0 or greater than 0 p naught is less than 0 that means you have to take this equation pk is p naught it will be substituted as minus 9 starting point it is uh, 0 comma r so it will be 0 comma 10 in our case x uh, k is uh, 0 substitute that value here and find out the answer you will get it as minus 6 right pk plus 1 is minus 6 and that's the same thing here p1 you got is as minus 6 but uh, will you increment um, yeah x will be incremented in any case but will y decrement or not since you have got the value of p0 as less than 0 in this case okay p0 value you have to compare for uh, next x and y values okay not this value p0 value you have to compare okay less than 0 means only x will increment and y will remain as same y will not increment so it will be the next point will be 1 comma 10 itself then since you have got less than 0 again use the same equation and substitute the value of p1 here find out p2 here keep it as such since you have got less than uh, 0 here at that time you will just increment x here and not y it will be 2 comma 10 same thing goes here since you got the value here again mi minus 1 find out this value here by using the same equation you got the value here as minus 1 so you'll be just incrementing y x term here y will remain same and after that you will get a positive value here okay if you got a positive value here what does that mean use the next equation next equation means this one this equation you have to use so substitute those values here and when you substitute that values what answer you get is this one as minus 3 since you've got a positive value increment x as well as decrement y so 10 will become 9 here okay like that you'll keep on go, uh, going until you reach the equal value okay means in all these cases as you can observe the x value is smaller than uh, y value x value is smaller than y value when you get to a point that x value equal to y value or x value uh, greater than y value if it crosses stop at that point what answers you got here that's your plotting points okay like first uh, you got here as uh, 1 comma uh, 10 2 comma 10 3 comma 10 and uh, um, 4 comma 9 so actually i had to make the point here so the point will be here okay so 4 comma 9 and 5 comma 9, uh, comma 9 and um, 6 comma 8 and 7 comma 7 so i have made an extra point here so just ignore that you got the concept right like the octet is uh, formed here in the first uh, quadrant so that's all what you have to do in the questions when they ask you so this was the topic which you have discussed about the midpoint uh, circle algorithm in the exam also they last mostly this one only you have to use this one and there's another one like the actual Bresenman's uh, circle algorithm okay so that one also we'll be discussing like uh, what formula you have to use a slight change is there okay but in exam mostly this one only is asked okay like if i show you the previous uh, questions in that um, the question is asked in this way see here the write the circle drawing algorithm given the circle radius solve the midpoint circle algorithm okay in that way if they ask the whatever i have explained just now that's the thing you, which you have to write so it's repeated two times here whereas uh, the other one is like Bresenman's actual algorithm which is a slightly different one but in syllabus also they have given this one and it's included in the syllabus they can equally ask this one as well 
so uh, just listen uh, if like uh, you have having, you are having any doubt in this one okay so here so everything the same thing that this is the starting point this is the ending point at each point you have to choose the decision has to be made x is anyways incrementing this is the question is y will increment or stay this uh, y will decrement or stay the same so here instead of uh, this one like uh, these are the points okay sorry i have made this is the same axis okay what i mean is this image is like this actually okay this image is like this and it's passing from here like this okay this is the circle which is passing and these are the x values xk xk plus 1 and this is yk both are yk here and this is xk plus 1 and yk minus 1 okay these are the points now in the uh, previous one we have we have uh, chosen this point and this point's mid value and then choosing if this is smaller or uh, th uh, this distance is smaller based on that which was smaller we are choosing that but here what we will do we will instead of uh, choosing if this boundary is passing through the uh, near to this one or this one instead of that we will be just uh, seeing the direct value like instead of the midpoint here and which is closer instead of that we will be just uh, seeing this value how close is point a to the boundary and how close point uh, b is to the boundary we will not draw a straight line here we will just compare it directly Okay, this is the only difference between the measurements, uh, previous algorithm and this algorithm. Okay, so uh, I'll call this as uh, del A. Okay, this distance as del A. Okay, this is nothing but del A. What will be it? It is xk plus one and uh, yk, and this is zero zero. So according to the um, distance between two points in a graph, the uh, the distance is xk plus one minus zero whole square plus yk plus uh, minus 0 whole square square root right this is the first point and this is the second point square root now distance will get as del a distance from the center to the point a in the same way we will be finding the distance from the center to the point b xk plus 1 minus 0 and yk minus 1 0 because the point b is yk minus 1 isn't it so this distance will be yk plus uh, yk minus 1 and uh, 0 okay so these are the distances which we got del a and del b so d a is nothing but del a minus r and del b minus r okay so what is del a minus r c this is the distance r okay this distance is r this distance is del a so if i want to calculate di this distance that will be del a the whole distance minus r and the same way goes for here also this is r this is del b so uh, uh, del b minus r will give me that distance means this distance is negative form okay means if this is 5 and the radius is 7 5 minus 7 is nothing but this distance okay minus 2 in negative i will get i am purposely taking in negative because i need to for that calculation and comparison so this one will always be positive and this one will always be negative okay so derivation is as follows um two points either this one or this one right so two distances okay i have calculated two distances and um, del a and del b we are taking the square of it okay so here is it's the part of the equation so i don't know why exactly we are taking the square but we are squaring it okay d a square and d b square minus r square and uh, r square here this will always be positive as discussed earlier this will always be negative now the point is like uh, the decision parameter so observe carefully the decision parameter since this is always positive and this is always negative at that time uh, if we add this up either we will get the answer less than 0 or greater than 0 when will the answer be less than 0 the answer will be less than 0 if this term is more negative than this term right this positive term and this negative term what i mean is if this answer we get as minus 5 and this answer we get as 3 so this is more negative term so the, if you add this up you'll get the negative term minus 2 right if you get the negative term minus 2 that is less than 0 what does less than 0 denote less than 0 denotes this is negative okay means this one value is more del b value is more right if del b value is more that means which point it is closer to if del b value is more in this uh, diagram if you observe this is the del b value and sorry um this is the del b value and this is the del a value okay so uh, which value is more if this value is more means it's more far from the point boundary and uh, if this value is lesser it, that means it's uh, nearer to this point so observe, observe uh, just one thing carefully whichever is more value that will be more negative or more positive and that will be more far okay see here if this value is more negative means it is more far from the boundary right if this is a smaller value that means it's nearer to the boundary so whichever value we get if it's uh, if the answer of this one we get negative that means this value is more if this value is more means point b is far therefore point a is chosen because point a is nearer okay that's what i have written here
pixel a is chosen because it's nearer on the other hand if this was fine this was minus 3 what answer we get here if you add them up we'll get the positive answer greater than 0 if it's positive answer means the positive term is greater that means a value is uh, greater that means b is uh, near to the boundary so if it's, it's a positive value b is chosen so the addition parameter is written here del a and del b so what is del a d a square minus r square and del b is d b square minus r square substitute these values d a as uh, x plus 1 whole square and uh, plus y k whole square what is d a we have written here what is d a d a is this one I square it d b also we will be choosing this one as well in the next term okay just expand it and simplify it you will get uh, an answer here so what, what answer you get is this is the official formula for d k you will be writing the same formula but for dk uh, plus 1 instead of k you will be writing k plus 1 that's all okay if it's k here write k plus 1 k is here write k plus 1 rest all is same okay k is here write k plus 1 and r is same here after you have written that one you will subtract the, this one and this one to know how much means how fast it is increasing to get that value here you will be just subtracting and putting xk plus 1 as yk plus 1 okay what is xk plus 1 xk plus 1 is the next value of x see here if you see the graph here at that time um, yeah this is xk the next value of xk is xk plus 1 which is nothing but xk plus 1 and what about yk yk is still in doubt like if it's yk only or yk minus 1 so that will depend on whether we choose yk or yk uh, minus 1 that will depend on if the value of dk is less than 0 or greater than 0 so let's see the two cases for yk the two cases for yk will be this like uh, after we substitute these values and find out yk plus 1 will be kept as such we will not substitute yk or yk minus 1 because uh, we are not yet sure if it's less than 0 or greater than 0 so uh, based on which case it is like uh, this answer we get after uh, the substitution uh, substitution part and uh, if it's less than 0 at that time the point chosen is yk itself if it's less than 0 means it's nearer to point a the upper point only will be chosen if it's greater than 0 that means it's far from a and uh, nearer to b so yk minus 1 will be chosen this is yk minus 1 and this is yk plus 1 uh, sorry yk only okay so if we substitute the value of yk plus 1 as yk only in the previous equation at that time we will get this answer and simplifying we will get this answer if it's greater than or equal to 0 point b is chosen yk plus 1 is written as yk minus 1 and that will value will substitute, uh, substitute here and this is the answer which you get here okay and finding out the initial distribution parameter d naught first we'll uh, take this formula the official formula and uh, after that we'll substitute the value here of um, the first point which we need in the first point x is 0 and y is r substitute those values here you will get an answer t minus 2 r okay this is the first value which you have to take so uh, here are the important formulas d naught 3 minus 2 r dk plus 1 dk plus 4 xk plus 6 for dk less than 0 and dk plus 1 dk plus 4 xk minus 4 yk plus 10 if it's greater than 0 so even if you do not understand the actual thing what's happening here you'll be understanding when we will be solving a problem okay so let's see how the problem looks like so coming to the pro uh, problem part plot a circle uh, having the radius 10 using the Bresenman's algorithm so you have to observe carefully if they have asked for midpoint algorithm or for the Bresenman's algorithm so since they have asked for Bresenman's algorithm we'll be starting from here starting point is 0 0 and uh, sorry not 0 0 the starting point is 0 10 this is the iteration number and the addition parameter is 3 minus 2 r so what is the value of r r is 10 so 3 minus 2 r is minus 17 if you get the value of minus 17 what you are supposed to do negative value means don't increment y just increment x so it will be 10 itself x will be uh, 0 to 1 now since you have got a negative value which formula you will be using you will be using this formula dk plus 4xk plus 6 so dk plus 4xk plus 6 is nothing but dk the previous value plus 4 xk the previous x value plus 6 what answer you get negative value here if it's negative just increment x uh, don't uh, do any, uh, anything to y and uh, move further since you have a negative value use the same formula dk plus 4 xk xk is previous value is this one plus 6 you get negative value increment x don't uh, do anything to y then use the uh, same formula since you have uh, got negative value minus 1 plus 4 xk plus 6 and you have got a positive value here observe carefully what's happening here for this uh, for this point you got a next uh, parameter as positive but you had got negative here right so you will not increment um, uh, y but just the x value will increment okay now since you have got positive for this one next one you will increment like 3 to 4 and 10 to minus 9 okay but the previous one will not increment okay if you observe carefully what we are doing 
got uh, this is the starting point negative value was here so you are making change to the next one so in the same way negative was here so we'll make change to the next one and whatever we get here based on that the change will be made it is positive so 3 will become 4 until it will become 9 okay if it's positive use the next formula which is the next formula this one dk plus 4 into xk minus 4 into yk plus 10 so substitute these values 4 into xk and minus yk i have taken separately like in a bracket xk minus yk and substitute this values and find the answer we got negative here don't increment the, the don't do anything to y keep it as such then increment the x value and so on okay just keep on doing until you get the value of x as uh, equal or greater than uh, y value stop it and after that what uh, the points which you which have written here okay these are the points you have to use okay so these are the points which you will be plotting in the graph and you will be making the first uh, octant okay so this is all about the module one of cg and thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one